You are now listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report. Flash Report. Um, and just to kind of look ahead to what to expect on uh, 6 o'clock Eastern on the, on the 30th, which is today, the Sunday, uh, I think we'll probably start with the Murray trade. So the Murray trade, um, and I had said that the deal had to be done right you know, by prior to, to um, July 1st, um, because of Murray's extension kicking in and the numbers working actually will not be done until July 6th. And, you know, when you, when you're so programmed that where I am, I'm focused on the 2024, 25 salaries, 2023, 24, New Orleans is 280,000 below the luxury tax and how a trade bonus works. It actually works as real salary. When you make a trade once the season's over and you're taking a $30 million player for a $25 million player, that does not impact your luxury tax um, bottom line. What it does is it impacts your um, your tax bottom line if that player has um, a bonus, a trade bonus in here. So DeJounte Murray's trade bonus was $12 million. When you either spread it out over three or four years, that's an added $3 million or $4 million to the um, to the uh, Pelicans bottom line so for example the uh, by moving it to July 1st um, the New Orleans will not have to pay the luxury tax because the new year starts July 1 um, the deal to get expanded however keep an eye on New Orleans having to add another player possibly a guy like Matt Ryan maybe they maybe there's a sign and trade in place because they are short about 2.1 to 2.2 million dollars so that deal will not get done until uh, we believe, unless New Orleans wants to pay the luxury tax and lose out on $12 million, that deal will not get done until uh, July 6th when the moratorium uh, is over. So that's a little bit in a nutshell as far as the, 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 the semantics from the new, uh, the Murray trade here. Uh, we thought it was going to get done because the extension, once the extension kicks, it goes from like 18 to like now it's like 27. It's a big gap in numbers there as far as to, to get the money to work um, you know, certainly within, um, you know, $7.5 million. So there, you are short as far as what's going out and what's coming in. Uh, Brooklyn and New York's trade has not been official. I would expect that to get done on July 6th. I would expect it to, to expand. I would expect New York to add a player in the mix, um, whether it be a, um, whether it be a, a player on their roster or a player used in a sign-in trade. The Knicks are not going to hard cap themselves at the first apron. That's not happening. So they'll hard cap themselves at the second apron, which is 189.5. It will give them an $11 million more in flexibility. They'll have $20 million basically to fill out their roster. If they trade Mitchell Robinson, they will be able to hopefully bring back Isaiah Hartenstein. He will get offers once free agency opens. Certainly keep an eye on Orlando for him. Keep an eye on Contavious Colwell Pope in Orlando. They have $52 million roughly in cap, $49 million in cap space. They can split it up and use it on both players. They decline the option on um, Mo Wagner, who I'd like, uh, and, and will have value certainly on the open market, and certainly Joe Ingles here. So keep an eye on, on um, Orlando for like the, um, I don't want to call them like the tier B guys after LeBron and Paul George, um, but the next layer of guys. So keep an eye on Orlando there. Keep an eye on Brooklyn, New York trade, expanding for New York, adding another player. Um, speaking of LeBron, uh, I wrote about it, and I'm not going to like pat myself on the back as far as what the contracts we would like to see. Uh, about LeBron taking a, a discount. Uh, Dave McMenamin came out and said it yesterday that he will take a discount based on three players, Clay Thompson, uh, James Harden, Jonas Valanciunas. I laughed when Valanciunas got thrown in there. He's like, wow, if I were him, I would take that <laughs> deal right now. Um, so here's how it would have to work. Basically, the number is right around $30 million for LeBron James to sign the uh, sign a con- one year $30 million and then basically redo it, uh, do another deal next year because they'll have bird rights and then you can max them out next year. So it's a $20 million haircut. You probably will lose Max Christie in that deal. Um, we'll see what happens with D'Angelo Russell. Certainly, if Russell gets traded, that changes the dynamics there. Um, but $30 million is the magic number when you're looking at LeBron. That will get you uh, the non-tax mid-level exception, which is at $12.9 million. Will it get you Clay Thompson? I don't know. I think Dallas is in the, uh, I don't want to call it the driver's seat, but I think Dallas has a strong position to go get Clay Thompson, either with their non-tax mid-level or they created a $16.1 million trade exception 
from the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade. I tweeted it yesterday. You can acquire players now using your exception. So if you want to um, acquire Quentin Grimes with your biannual, you can to expand it. I know Dallas has another trade exception. They can they can do that also and, and also keep your keep your biannual here. Um, I think for the Lakers. You know, if he can get more in Dallas, I think he's going to go there. That would require Golden State to do a signing trade um, as far as uh, with uh, with Clay going to Dallas. Um, the Mavericks will be hard capped one way or another. What does that mean to Derek Jones? I don't see a scenario where you keep Clay Thompson and Derek Jones unless you're really moving out salary. I think that's going to be um, that's going to be the challenge there. You could sign Jones with your non-tax and acquire Thompson with your buy uh, with your trade exception. But you are over the first apron, and you will have to move out um, additional salary here. So that's a little bit on Clay Thompson. For, certainly, um, Paul George, you know, we were waiting on the world for Paul George, opts into his contract. It opens up a lot of different scenarios. I thought we were leaning towards that around 4 o'clock yesterday. Um, he certainly opts out of that contract. So what does that mean? Basically, there's two scenarios here. He's either going to re-sign with the Clippers, or he's going to sign with Philadelphia or, um, or Orlando. I don't see a scenario where there's a signing trade, and I wrote about it, and it's possible, but it's really a long shot, where the Clippers and Philadelphia engage in a signing trade, and the Clippers create an, a trade exception. Because here's what's going to happen. Philadelphia gets hard capped. You acquire a player in a signing trade, that hard caps you. So when you add Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, and once you fill out your roster, um, you are going to be right at the first apron. You cannot exceed $178.7 million. Um, so I don't see a scenario... Um, where there's a signing trade in place. I don't see a scenario where there's a signing trade in place in Golden State. I just don't see the numbers worked. If Golden State had an opportunity, they would have gotten him opting into his contract. Um, what does it mean for the Clippers? I would expect James Harden to be back. I would expect them to go use their non-tax mid-level exception on, um, let's see, De'Anthony Melton, Max Christie, guys like that. Um, you, there'll be a list of guys as far as wings out there. Um, so that's the scenario with uh, with the Clippers here. Patrick Williams goes back to Chicago, five for 90. Keep an eye on what happens with DeMar DeRozan. Literally, there is no market for Zach Levine. Um, they are trying to give him away and attach a first-round pick. I've been told that by th multiple, multiple people, um, and that is not happening. Um, so if there is no unloading of the Levine contract, then De the Rosen is just basically hanging in the wind. Keep an eye on Philadelphia. If they have available cap space, could have around $14, $15 million after it's all said and done. That's basically him going, I don't know why De DeMar DeRozan – I mean, I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's a 25 to $30 million guy. I've said this all along. He plays 92% of his regular season games. DeMar DeRozan uh, plays. Keep an eye on the cap space teams. Uh, Utah, certainly with uh, Markinen, um, he is certainly in play if the, if the right deal is there. Um, we are looking at Detroit taking back contracts. Certainly... Um, San Antonio has got to create room. They're not there. They'd have to waive Devontae Graham. Um, who else is out there? Orlando, certainly, um, you know, with uh, Paul, Call of Pope and Hartenstein. Oklahoma City, I could see the Thunder, basically. They, they, um, they decline the options on Isaiah Joe and Aaron Wiggins. Basically, they're going to sign those guys to extensions. You don't uh, decline an option on, on Isaiah Joe, who becomes an unrestricted free agent, um, and then basically let him hang in the wind. Um, they will be signed. They will be signed to new contracts. That will probably be where the, the Thunder's cap space goes to. Uh, what else we got here? Rashawn Holmes basically declined his option. They resigned him to a new contract. The reason why is they lowered his number. He can fit into a team's uh, non-tax mid-level exception if he was traded. That fits in there. Um, that's why they did it. Um, it would hard cap a team because when you use the non-tax mid-level exception to acquire a player, it hard caps you. Um, we got a lot of different the, the rules, here's a, here's a quote a team said to me. They basically let us build a really nice house. The county inspected it, gave us our permit, and a year later they asked us to knock it down. These rules, these rules, I'm not going to give the word, have screwed up a lot of teams here. Really have. I mean, look at Denver and Caldwell Pope. Certainly you can bring him both back, and I think you might have a chance that you are going to lose him here. So keep an eye on Miles Bridges. Keep an eye on Tyus Jones. Keep an eye on Clay Thompson, DeRozan, Paul George. It is not a great free agent class after you get past those guys. It's really poor. 
no, no, no offense. Um, keep an eye on Donovan Mitchell extension, possibly. Um, certainly, we've talked about De'Aaron Fox. Certainly, keep an eye on Brandon Ingram. That's probably your wild card if a guy does get moved. Keep an eye on Markkinen as a guy that potentially could get moved if there is the right deal out there. Um, I think if you're Utah, you want to get better. How many more draft picks do you want? Markkinen's in the last year of his contract. They've got cap space. They can renegotiate in August. Subscribe now and stay up to date for all things New Orleans Pelicans.